Hi guys and welcome back. So today I thought we would take a quick look over the Tesla Powerwall, uh, some of the features, and uh, is it worth it for you uh, here in 2025 and what the benefits are of having uh, such a device like a, a larger battery attached to your home storage. So um, this is the Tesla Powerwall 3 itself. Um, so it comes as, as basically this unit. Um, this is the main uh, Powerwall 3 unit. Um, so this is a, uh, it's actually a 15 kilowatt hour battery, but you can only usably use 13 and a half kilowatt hours. So basically what it is, is it's a, a battery storage solution um, that uh, allows you to charge up the battery and then you can also choose through the app how you want to discharge. Essentially what you can do with it is you could charge it on cheap overnight electricity and then you can discharge it throughout the day when the electricity charges a lot higher for example. Um, so to give you an idea of what that might look like is for um, for five hours a night, I can charge on seven pence per kilowatt hour electricity, and then I could discharge it um, throughout the day when it's 33 pence per kilowatt hour here in September of 2025. Um, so by doing that, basically you could save money on your electricity bill. So that's one way you could use it. Um, the other way that you can use it, and this is actually more the way that I'm planning to use it, the battery, is that, um, yeah, I'll charge it up overnight on that sort of cheap electricity, but I will probably use most of it as a battery backup solution. So what I mean by that is that we've been getting some more power cuts here um, in Aberdeenshire in the UK um, more recently and more frequently. So anyway, um, how I'm planning to use it is as a battery backup system and uh, using it as an island, uh, essentially, in the case of a power outage. So um, the other part to this, so this is the main battery unit, as I said, and there's an isolator switch for it. Um, but um, there's another part, which is the gateway, um, which you can see here. Um, the gateway is something that's included with the Powerwall 3, and that's got things like your inverter and your EPS in it, um, which allow you the Tesla Powerwall to be used as an island and to produce electricity um, when you're out of power, you know, out of grid power. Um, so it's, it, it's useful uh, in that scenario of um, you have no electricity for a few hours, in our case sometimes, and then um, basically the power wall just takes over and just continues running the household. And for me, more importantly, there's some devices in the house that are um, sort of subject to more failure if, um, if the power goes out. So just some other ways that you could potentially use this um, on your system is you can link this in with your solar panels if you have those, or if you're planning to put solar panels on as well. And you could use solar panels to charge up during the day and then discharge it overnight and uh, essentially have free energy uh, that way. Um, what you can also do though, is you can use it to sell energy back to the grid. So if you're generating the energy for free or you're generating through um, you know, those off-peak hours when it's cheaper um, to uh, buy electricity, you can then use the energy that's stored in the battery or surplus energy from your solar panels to get money um, from your supplier. So I think they typically buy back, just an example of about 22 pence per kilowatt hour. So if you're generating um, and, you know, you're generating from solar, you fill up the battery uh, during the day and you know that you need 20% of it to get through the night when there's no solar being, uh, no solar generating, um, then you could sell that energy back to the grid at 10, 22 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, so you could make some money back that way. That's just another way that you could use it. So as I said, the unit itself has a 13.5 kilowatt hour built-in battery uh, capacity. So that's the usable uh, capacity. And I think one of the good things as well with the, the Powerwall is that um, Tesla guarantees over a 10 year uh, period, at least 80% of that energy retention, or they'll replace the battery uh, for you. Um, and I suppose the, the other thing to that is that um, if 13 and a half kilowatt hour of energy is not enough for you, um, then what you can do is you can actually just go ahead and have your uh, in initial uh, Powerwall 3 unit um, and then you could have a, a, a second power wall, third and fourth one. So you can have three coming off of here. They're essentially um, just battery expansion packs, each of them 13.5 kilowatt hours, again, 
Um, so you could have over 50 uh, kilowatt hours of energy out of one of these. Um, and the other thing is that you can have multiple of these gateway units. Um, so you could have um, your first one out here, for example, you could have a second one in the attic, you could put them elsewhere in the house if you wish to. Um, and then you can have pretty much as much of that storage as you want. I think you can have four gateways in total, maximum, each with four batteries, including the gateway. Um, so that would give you loads of energy storage um, that you could utilize uh, that way as well. Um, so some people might be thinking that I've got a Tesla car, I've got a Tesla wall connector, and I've got a Tesla Powerwall 3 um, that I'm using. Uh, perhaps the Powerwall 3 to charge my electric car, um, which is not the case, not in the slightest. Um, so if you uh, just, just take the numbers raw as they are, um, pure estimates of course, because they're not always exact, um, is that the uh, Tesla Model X, for example, has a 100 kilowatt hour battery, um, whereas the Tesla Powerwall 3 has a 13.5 kilowatt hour battery. So I could potentially get roughly 13.5% of um, the car battery charged off of the Powerwall 3. So it's not, it's not really for that. So you can also see um, in the impact screen um, how much of your energy has been used during uh, peak or off peak times, which is whatever you set it to be um, through the app. And you can see um, how much of your battery is being used uh, throughout the day. Um, and make changes to how you use your battery on that basis if you'd like. Um, you can also see uh, what events that you've had. Um, so any backup events where external power has been lost to the house and that the power wall has been running to um, save that. So we've only had one since I've had the power wall about three weeks ago. Um, and so uh, pretty pretty short test as well because it was only 23 minutes outage that uh, we lost power to the house for. I'm not sure why we lost it. There was no storm or anything like that, but it, uh, it uh, continued running the household in terms of the equipment that I had running at the time. So one of the other main reasons that I uh, purchased Powerwall over the Duracell system um, is that Powerwall is actually connected into the Met Office. So the Met Office here in the UK is like our sort of weather um, warning system I suppose um, so it provides general weather updates but it also provides information about storms and other um, potential issues that are coming up um, they also issue uh, power alerts so the Tesla power was linked into that Met Office provider um, and so if you have any storm warnings that potentially are going to impact power loss or um, they expect power loss to happen in the area, then Powerwall will, despite whatever settings you've got, it will automatically charge up to 100% battery and it will stay there uh, during the period of the storm and then it will um, uh, discontinue after that and renew, resume normal power settings. Um, so I think having all of that fully automated, especially if I'm away from the, the house, um, then that's uh, a real bonus for me.